Spark of the Divine was a well-thought-out love letter to a and d campaign that turned into a vivid, soul-crushing epic. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to a fictional escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is the Spark of the Divine by Louise Holland book review. This is a book which is coming out on November 24th. This review should be coming out on the 23rd. So if you like the sound of it, go ahead and pre-order it. The link will be down below. I'll give you a warning. This one's going to be a bit of a gush. This is probably one of my favorite reads that I've had so far in 2023. And I didn't really think I'd have many more of those coming into the last part of the year. And this book just got me by surprise. This was a five star read for me and I had an absolute blast. Before we jump into the review today, make sure you check the description box down below for links to my social media and discord should you want to come along for the ride. So let's jump in to Spark of the Divine. The mission was simple. Rescue Camden, the pompous brat next in line for the throne and bring him home. It seems easy, right? Not quite. Upon their return, they are offered more money if they can help with one more thing keep Camden safe. What they didn't realize was that in doing so, they would uncover a plot to steal the divine essence from the gods and unleash a creature so devastating, the fate of the world as they know it could be at stake. When May's god is attacked and her power fails, it is now up to her and her team to restore it before the rest of the seven realms descends into madness. She will have to rely on each and every one of her friends to see it through but she must be careful who she trusts. The question is, how far would you go to save your god? Spark the Divine is a realm-jumping, action-heavy, heartwarming, moment-filled debut that will have you on the edge of your seat, second-guessing your loyalty, and hoping like hell all of these characters make it out alive. Now, I have to say, for me, there was so much to love in this debut. This was an absolute epic. The author has created a vivid world full of interesting characters that you can't help but love, uh, coupled quite a, a plot that grows more complex over time with a simple and accessible prose, which is ready to be read from all levels of fantasy fans. As always, I'm a sucker for it, so I'm going to start off with the world. From the first page, it is very clear that Holland has been a skilled world and character builder over her time playing these D, D campaigns. We start off with a character called Lessie who is new to the group and is feeling like she's sort of yet to prove her worth. As we get introduced to her we find that she's on a reconnaissance mission and she's observing the keep that they need to go to to save their charge. What really struck me about the way that this keep was written is that it it felt alive from the second that you got to experience it. Because we were on this reconnaissance mission with her, we were seeing how the guards were posted, how they were moving, what her thoughts and feelings were about, how they were going to go into this particular area and save Camden. It was really fun to see. We also got to get a feel for the terrain and her strategy, which created a near perfect picture, I would say, or in my opinion, so if you're a visual reader, the visual cues in this book are going to be a real treat for you. But the imagery doesn't stop there. We've got five to 600 pages of realm shifting and we get to experience those realms in vivid detail. We have new cities to explore. We've got new species to uncover and so much more. The author also does a great job of not staying in one place for too long. She doesn't let you get super comfortable with where you are. Once you've got that picture in your head, that's great. We're going to move on to something else. So it's almost like this rolling film that is being created in your mind for, for visual readers. Uh, myself being a visual reader, it was an absolute delight to have that rolling picture and that rolling imagery come through. So much care has been taken in crafting the reader this world and i was completely immersed in it and i had a really really good time next up on my praise list is going to be character work and the characters themselves are great but what i want to really showcase here is the interactions that we have between the characters for a debut novel this book incorporates quite a large cast of characters. There's a lot to keep up with and I think that the author has done justice to each and every character in my opinion. 
We have this newbie, Lessie, who I just spoke about. We have a Kitscan Raven, who is from a cat like species but doesn't like to be called a cat because that's insulting he's not a house cat he is very much a full-size cat-like being but he is so beautifully literal and it made me smile every time he was on the page the dynamic between Leslie and Reven was really sweet uh to uncover he's obviously very fond of her but he doesn't know how to really express those emotions uh, so he calls her her full name, uh, Lysandra, I think it is, and he just refuses to call her nickname, and it's a sign of respect for her. Uh, and she's like, why didn't you just call me my nickname? And things like that. It just was really cute to follow along with. Um, we also have May and Valandris, who Valandris is another godlike being who has to keep his eyes covered at all times because his magic is too powerful, and if people see it, it can blind them. Um, and if he uses it, it you know, has effects on other people, which can be devastating. May and Valandris have a really interesting relationship, and the dynamic between those two was amazing as well, as are all the dynamics. So different groups and people. This is probably something that I would akin to Tolkien. Uh, so his group dynamics, where you've got people who sort of naturally move off with one another and are closer because of species or growing up and things like that. It felt very much like this group had known each other for a long time with the exception of Lessie and they'd built their little cliques and we got to see all of that. And I thought this was fantastically done in this book. There was so much to love. So the characters themselves were really interesting, but it was for me, the interactions, which were beautiful. They were heartwarming. They got heated and anything else you can think of. Spark of the Divine really is a love letter to the lifelong bonds that can come from having a shared interest with a group of people. If you're someone who has, you know, even met people online through things like World of Warcraft, or you've played D&D matches by yourself in your groups, you know how strong those connections can be. And you can feel that. You can feel those connections in this book. The final thing I do want to mention is just how accessible this book is to new and seasoned fantasy readers. While it immediately feels classically fantastical with the amount of magic the gods non-human species in here the words on the page themselves are very inviting and very easy to follow the accessibility couples really well with the plot that does build and becomes more complex as the story goes on so being able to have your reader build that and build their comfort levels with the fantasy world is going to be is, is such a clever way to pull someone into your world and I think that was also done quite well here. I really think that people need to watch out for the best ways to get into fantasy lists because a lot of people will go to Sanderson and yes Sanderson's writing is very accessible for new people but I think Spark of the Divine is just as accessible and quite honestly more entertaining. <laughs> So sorry for the Sanderson fans out there, but I just had a really wonderful time with it. If you want to watch an incredible campaign based on the author's unhinged D&D sessions, and that was in quotes, come to life with a few creative liberties, of course, then this is one that you don't want to miss. It's classic. It's epic. It's character driven. Fantasy fans are just going to fall in love with Calarac and everything inside of it. That was Spark the Divine by Louise Holland. Are you going to pick this one up? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've already read it, let me know what you think. I know Esme uh, and I both really enjoyed it. She was waiting for me to hurry up and finish it. But yeah, let me know. If you like the content, give one of those. If you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will. I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.